does take us to our talk of the tape this hour. The bull run for stocks. How long can it last? Let's ask Dan Greenhouse, Solus Alternative Asset Management's chief strategist, and Brian Belsky, the chief investment strategist for BMO, both here with me at Post 9. It's good to have you guys. Um, Dan, I'll, I'll begin with you. Let, let's just react to the Fed share, um, because the market really didn't love what he had to say in, in terms of the space, uh, the size of the rate cuts that we, we think that we're going to get, right? He sort of tamped down expectations that it's just going to be, hey, let's just set it on 50 basis points next meeting and the one thereafter, and then we're good. That's not really what he said. No, I, I mean, I read the speech on the way over here, and I don't think he really said very much at all. Um, l listen, I think the important thing for investors at home, and this can't be said enough, and I've said it plenty, but it bears repeating, the important thing for investors at home to remember is that 25 versus 50 didn't matter last time, 25 versus 50 doesn't matter next time. The path is clear. The Fed is on the, uh, on the, on, uh, is in the process of reducing interest rates by call it another 1 to 200 basis points by the end of next year. That more than any interval or any specific meeting is what matters. You're shifting from an environment where the Fed was getting constrictive, was staying constrictive, and is now transforming itself into a more accommodative Fed. And that's what matters. How do you invest in that environment compared to what we've seen recently? But Brian, I mean, the, mar the market's pricing in more than 25 or each for the next two meetings. I mean, isn't that an issue? How much of an adjustment does the market need to do, uh, you know, r respectfully to, to Dan's points that he made? Well, it's an honor to be on with my good friend and long-term oh, colleague you, here, Brian. Dan. Um, you know, listen. It didn't I wish we could start just one of these without that. Not. <laughs> Let's just. Can we just please answer the question? No, so listen. So we didn't. We didn't know it was going to be 25 or 50 when we upgraded our number. We just know, like Dan said, that the trend is your friend. The trend is your friend in terms of the the, the trend of the Fed. That's number one. Number two. I really believe, and we've been saying this now for two years. We'll probably say it again for our forecast next year, that. We are on a path to normalization. What does normalization mean? Well, 0% interest rates, not normal. Uh, the kind of uh, up and down volatility in stocks the last five years, not normal. Uh, with respect to valuations, not normal. So what does that mean? Okay? It means 3 to 4% 10-year Treasury. It means 10 to 15% earnings growth. And it means 10 to 15% CAG, or compound annual growth rate, of the United States stock market, which is the average when you put in the yield. So what does that mean for next year? If you're still looking at double-digit earnings growth, we're very comfortable with the market continuing to head higher into next year, albeit with performance spreading out. So I think the Fed is doing its job. I think, actually, they've done a wonderful job. And with respect to your specific question uh, in terms of Fed funds, a year ago, remember a year ago, they were looking for six cuts in 2024. They were wrong. So I think don't, I, I would stress to people, do not focus on Fed funds futures. Focus on what the Fed is actually saying and what the market is telling you. All right, so your, your 6,100 price target on the S&P, you're comfortable with, no matter what the, the chair said. I mean, look, it's, the economy's good, okay? Yep. He said as much. Now, yields are moving up, I think, in, in respect to that comment, and also the fact that, okay, so they're not going to be as aggressive as perhaps the market seems to, to still be pricing in. Thus, you know, the two-year, for example, the yield is higher today than it was, you know, pre-cut. That speaks to don't listen to the Fed funds futures, and they have to they have to build rebuild their credibility. I think, Scott, and I know that I say this, like I said this before, but this is 1995-96 all over again. We're heading back into that environment, and I think that's what it bodes well for these large cap stocks, not just the Nifty 50s, which are now the Meg 7, but we saw the, the Nifty 50s in 1995-96 spread out into other areas, including consumer discretionary telecom, which are now communication services, but most importantly, tech. And I think that that's going to be the main driver over the next two to three years. And I think the most interesting part about this is, and you were talking about this on the halftime show today, you've seen the broadening out in the market, but it hasn't come at the expense of the Mag 7. When you look at those charts, except for Google, which is having a little bit of its own trouble, the rest of those names are doing very well. Med is at an all-time high, basically. So, so while you're getting this broadening out into real estate, into utilities, into industrials, it's not as if those stocks are coming down. And that, more than anything else, is incredibly bullish. So, so you